Robert Lanti. I'm the founder of The Vocalist Studio. My team of international coaches and I have produced the world's most popular and effective online courses for vocal training. I'm super excited to offer an online course that will help you to develop chest voice tone or belt voice on high notes. This includes high definition video demonstrations of every workout performed by me. You're gonna get pre-recorded solo piano workouts as well to train with. You're gonna get vocal workouts that are specifically designed for the singular mission of training, the motor skills and the strength required for belting in the head voice. You can do this, get started. I'll be here with you every step of the way. See you on the inside. Hey, how's it going? Well, I think so. Yeah, pretty decent, man. How, how, was, how, was, how was the NAM show and everything? Oh my God, the NAM show uh, was really super cool. Um, my mission was to go talk to anybody but in particular microphone companies because i have a fetish for them as you guys well know and uh if we go down here to try to find it quickly yeah here it is i'll share that screen my screen around here so uh yeah um these are the mics i just took pictures of these things i have a love and a passion for the industrial design of microphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gorgeous. They're like motorcycles. I, I, I saw. I actually saw once at the uh, uh, an exhibit in a museum. Uh, I think it was the Museum of Broadcasting. They had all these mics from the '30s, '40s, and '50s. Yeah, yeah. It, it was incredible. Yeah, vintage is one angle of going very, very cool, and it's 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 quite a hot market. Hot, hot market. This is a ribbon mic. Uh, where the, the element that's capturing the sound, the sound waves from the instrument, the singer, is a thin, like tissue, tissue type filament. It's a thin filament that moves, right? Okay. And um, that's one of three ways to capture sound waves in microphones. Um, this is a magnet system, it's, it's dynamic, but um, uh, ribbon mics. A little more fragile because of that filament but they're really great you get a warm sound from the ribbon mics uh, yeah that's like that's like the old school the old school yeah. like frank sinatra frank that's sinatra right. song. yeah 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 you get sort of like an old vintage sound from that um we'll do this quickly all right so this is a this is a clone of the famous neumann u67 done by a company called warm so instead of spending fifteen thousand dollars on a uc on a real neumann you could go to warm audio and get literally the same thing. And I, and I put on the headphones and I listened to this thing and it was warm, like a no Neumann. It sounded so great. And it's like 1500 bucks or something. Um, moving right along. This is a Soyuz. This is, this is a hand built custom mic from Russia. This is Russia's top mic company. Um, this is considered to be the Neumann of Russia. Uh, it's called the Soyuz. And just, I mean, in regards to industrial design, I mean, look at this. It thing. looks cool. It looks cool. Absolutely gorgeous, man. All right. So uh, this is a um, Vanguard American built mic. Um, and this is something I never heard of before. I just thought it looked cool. It's called bamboo. I want one. Uh, these are manly's. These are these are competitive to the Neumanns. So I believe it's American made microphone. They're, they're super expensive. Um, high end stuff. This is something that's sort of cool. Condenser microphone, sort of a cool industrial design. Um, these are microphones that you build yourself. So you get you 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 pick your chassis, your colors, you, you pick your your capsule, what sound color you want from your capsule, and then you build your own mic. Which was you you actually like solder it together yourself? No, I think I don't think you saw. Maybe you do. I don't know. I don't know. Um, this is a bee's knees. This is an Australian mic that's competing with the uh, warm audio, really a high end, beautiful microphone that also sounds like the Neumanns and the, and the classics. Um, Roswell, moving right along. This is a company out of the UK called Sontronics, and this is also a Sontronics mic. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. Uh, he's in the UK. Trevor. Uh, Myberg, this is a um, hand-built custom mic from Germany. Again, you know, competing with the, the big guys. And let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, I forget the name of this, but it's pretty. <laughs> Okay. All right. SE and oh, this is this is probably my favorite. This is a Milab. Milab. It's hand built in Sweden. It's a Swedish mic. 
and and I stepped up, put on the headphones. He had a little bit of reverb in it. And I put on the headphones and I and I was and I you know voila sort of thing. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. It's so warm and just I didn't want to leave. I just of all these microphones, it's probably not. It, it might not be the nicest, it, it, you know, uh, but it's the one I want. That's this is this Milav is just so gorgeous. Right, um, and, di- and different mics work better for different voices, right? Yes, indeed. And um, uh, I think we're almost on the tour here. This is the Vanguard again. This is a dual stereo capsule mic. So what you have is you have two capsules in the mic. That top capsule rotates. Okay, so the bottom one stays straight on. The top one will rotate slightly, you know, facing you know, 2 o'clock or 10 o'clock. You turn it. And why would you do that? What that does is it creates like a, like a hundredth of a second phase delay in the sound. So, so, the, so the bottom mic gets the sound signal first from your voice. The top mic, since it's turned away an inch, gets it like a hundredth of a second later. What does that do? It creates depth. And, 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 and phasing in the, in the overall mix. It kind of creates, it's sort of like, a, it's, a, it's sort of a, it's a mechanical way of creating sort of like a, re, a, a reverb effect. And it gives you more depth and you can really do neat things with it. Apart from the fact that it's hand built, really beautiful and about 15,000 bucks. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So um, those, that's our microphone tour for the day. Um, other than uh, today, I'm going to be, where are we at? We're back here with the team. Okay. Um, I'm using the AKG D7. This is a great hand-built mic from Austria, the AKG D7. All right. Oh, somebody just came in. Cool. Here comes Amy. AKG D7. Um, just a hand-built dynamic mic. But one of the nice things about this out of all the dynamic mics when I did a shootout real quick is if you wanted to make a recording, if you wanted to record your voice, with a handheld dynamic live mic, okay, which wouldn't be your first preference. What you would really want to do is record your voice in the studio with the mics I just showed you guys. That's what those mics are for, okay? But, you know, on occasion, Bono, other people will record live with a handheld because it gets a different sound color. There's a reason for it. The producers want it. They're, 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 they're experimenting with different sound colors and things. Anyways, I did a shootout on what handheld live dynamic microphones sounded the best in recordings um and and i i i i concluded that the akg d7 in regards to a affordable live uh workhorse dynamic microphone if you want you're on a budget and you wanted you had no other choice but to use a dynamic mic in your home recordings the d7 is really nice for home recordings don't know exactly why for some reason it's sort of creates a wide, spacious sound experience, sort of spacious, which is sort of nice for recording. Okay? All right. Are we done geeking out? One last thing. Today's uh, Robert Lenti live vocal training course is brought to you by the good people at Master Writer. Master Writer, you can see it behind me. Master Writer is an app I have. I think it's like $99 or something, but the cool thing about this app is it'll help you write lyrics. It doesn't write the lyric for you. It's not artificial intelligence, but what you can put in is it helps you find like really cool rhymes and really cool uh, phrases and contextual things. If I move my head, you can see you, you get phrases, word formulas, synonyms, definitions, speech types, other things. And I've written the most coolest lyrics for my songs with the help of using this app. What what's it what's the name of it? It's called Master Writer. Master Writer? Yeah, Master Writer. I'll give you a linky. Here, I'll give you a linky. Hang on. Where'd it go? Here it comes. Jim, here's the linky. Full transparency. This is an affiliate link. Like, you know, if you go out and you buy it, I get 35 bucks. Okay. How much how much does it cost? Uh go out and take a look at it, but let's do it. Okay. Okay. Anyways, yeah, if you struggle with lyrics, you got writer's block or whatever, and you don't want to like fully cheat with uh chat GPT, try this thing. It doesn't kill the creative process. You still have to put in an outline and a structure and an idea. It's just really great for rhymes and 
well, phrases, word families, synonyms, definitions, speech types in the world. Okay, we are on the inside of my own Master Writer account. The Master Writer software lives on the cloud. It's web-based, so it's always secure. You'll never lose your content, which is really nice about it. And basically, I'm gonna show you a couple things that are super cool. Um, number one, if I click on all songs over here, you'll see all the songs that I've worked on for myself, for my songs, and for my students. If we take a look at this cool song called Behind Diverted Eyes, I wrote this song, you can go listen to it out on YouTube. Type in Robert Lunty, Behind Diverted Eyes, and you can hear me sing and perform these lyrics. What's nice about Master Writer is it gives you a really nice workspace where you can work on your lyrics. And the other thing that's super cool, the most cool thing about it is if you just put in any word at the top here, notice how, um, for example, I'm putting in rock, Notice all the really cool options that rhyme with rock when you're writing lyrics. You're gonna find words in here that you would never come up with that are still cool. Airlock, bedrock, um, you know, gunlock, gridlock, these are cool words. And it goes on and on. We have three pages of this, right? Beyond just basic rhymes, they have this phrases feature here. See, these are phrases that could actually sit inside a lyric that are super cool. Um, pretty as a peacock, don't know if I'm gonna use that one, but um, been around the block, that's cool. Born out of wedlock, that's very cool for a lyric. Clean your clock, that could be cool for a rock lyric. So you get the point. Master Writer is awesome. I've used it for years and it will really help you to write more cool lyrics. If you're interested, click the link below and get yourself a copy. All right, guys, um, thank you for um, allowing me to take a little bit of break. I needed it. I need the break. Um, so um, that's cool, and it was productive. Now, let's get to work. Um, let's, uh, uh, um, uh, anybody's here, when I want to call out your name, say here. James. Yes, here. T.S. Here. Kaz. Here I am. Amy. <laughs> All right, great. Let's check our technology. Technology, um, Jim, do you yeah. have your um, master uh, template? Your ever your your Evernote template? Do you have your keyboard? Do you have a microphone? Do you have your live Rob interface up and running? Are you ready to train? I I have keyboard, microphone. I'm just uh, let me pull up the Evernote and the and the, uh, the TVS page. All right, get all stuff going. Kaz, yeah. sound off on the tech. Do you got everything up and re ready to go? Yeah? No? Maybe? Ireland, Ireland. Are, you, are we ready to go? Yeah. Okay, cool. Amy, Amy, are you rocking with all your stuff, ready to go? Yeah, I just have to pull up the Evernote also, so I'm doing that now. All right. T.S. True. Are you um, true to your facilities? Um, uh, not these facilities. I am not rocking. Um, where? I have to find the Evernote. Um, ah, where, where, said. Yeah. Okay, so said Evernote can be found in the live class resource page. Ah, uh, okay. Training uh, Clayton Holmes. Uh, okay. All right. Live class resource. Along with the previous recorded classes, the ebook, uh, technical tutorials, peer review stuff. It's all here. So if you can log into this, you have all your facilities here. Sweet. Cool. Right. We'll, all right. Um, Get fired um, up. That's the way, and it's the the ninety day we want. Yeah, baby, it's the ninety day. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, they don't hyperlink these things in here, so you have to kind of you have to open it and then go, then copy it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the group want version. I'm just going to drop it into the into the thing. All right, into the chat system here. All right. So guys. This is uh, te this is Coach Teacher Rob nagging at you. Have your stuff ready to go. You need to 
You know what this is? Jim, you know. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking. This, at this. Is, this is the tough love chopper. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got everything. Okay. I got everything. Okay. The tough love chopper. Let's go. Um, Kaz, you're on. Thank you for volunteering. Uh, and then you volunteered me. Yeah. Okay. Ireland, <laughs> Ireland, make your country proud. All right. So, um, Real quick, couple pop, pop, pop quizzes. Pop quizzes. Five things. Five things in the phonation package. Technical elements we talk about all the time. They need to be lined up. They need to be working together in a synergistic fashion. Let's go. Five. Give me five. Frequency. Give me five girl. My frequency, cry mode, focus, um, with respiration. Um, tuning my vowel cool. and release. Great. What is cry mode? Cry mode is when I um, well, that that had a little bit of cry. That, okay, that has a little bit of cry in it. I didn't ask you to demonstrate. Not that that's wrong. Bad answer. But I am going to hold you to the academics team. How long we've we been doing this now? 90 days or so, I want you guys to show the world what you know about the voice. We will get to the training. Kaz, it doesn't have to be perfect, but tell me, what is? Cry mode is when you bring out the emotion in the lyrics. This brings out the story. So when you, when you enter into cry mode, you're bringing out the emotion. You're bringing out the feeling of the song. So you're bringing it out into a way where you, you're, not, you're not talking. You're singing it in a cry mode where you... You, you're floating on air in a way. So you, 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 you're creating a story, emotion in your lyrics. <laughs> That's also a really good answer, and it's correct. And what you're hitting at is that one of the key benefits of cry mode from an artistic perspective is when the vocal folds are thinned out in cry mode, the sound color, it, it hits the ear subconsciously to the listener as amplified emotion. Mm -hmm. Now, what emotion is being communicated to the listener in the artistic con it, it comes from the artistic context. We call it cry mode, but it's important to understand that em amplified emotion that's that you're using to, to, to make your art better that people are hearing doesn't have to be sadness. Everybody's clear on yeah. that. Right? It, it just, it's called cry mode. So we sort of are inclined to think it's only about being sad. No, it's not. That's one. But if you thin out your vocal folds ah, and you get th the sound color that comes from thinning out the physiology just through like, tens and thousands of years of, of, of primate evolution, it means something. And the lyrics, what are the things? Shit, I gave it away. What is the thing, Amy, that dictates what that emotional that emotion will be to the to the listener? What is it that's going to determine the context? I'm going to guess the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. I gave it to you though, but yeah. All right, yeah. So be the lyrics. And also maybe maybe some of the visuals, like if you're watching Metallica, absolutely the lyrics, but also the visuals and stuff. You know, it gives a context on what we're supposed to be feeling from this amplified emotion sound color that's hitting our ears. But a, 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 bit, good, a little good bit esoteric, but I find it somewhat fascinating. And 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 I'm I'm just backing up. I'm you know, um uh, so Kaz, yes, correct. Jim. I was just going to say good melody and good chords don't hurt either for as far as. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could go on forever on this, but Jim, yeah. what, are, what are the physiology, physiological, the, 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 physio, um, the, the anatomical, uh, um, 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 uh, of stretching, stretching the, the, the stretching the vocal cords, Hopefully, getting more flexibility and more compression. Yes. 
more agility. Yeah. More compression. Uh, you see? Vocal, vocal fold adduction. Yes. Yes. That's perfect. More adduction. And in my opinion, the most important one, somebody, we still haven't hit. So we get better compression. Cats, we get a we get a more beautiful silky sound color that touches our hearts and it's 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 valid. It's 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 in it's it's what I teach as well. True. One more thing, man. One more thing. Cry mode. One more thing that cry mode does. Yeah, yeah. He's trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Amy, Amy, one more thing the cry mode does. I would say it allows you to transition through your break more easily. That's a good answer. It's not the one I'm looking for, but it's actually a good answer. Um, does it brighten? It, does it brighten the sound a little? It removes it removes pharyngeal constriction. Oh, okay. All the pushiness, the grippiness goes away. Anybody that comes to me and tells me if I have to just do one like get one little motor skill going to make the pushiness and the squeeziness on high notes through my vocal break go away, I'm signing up. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm signing up. I'm on board. Because that's the most that's the most difficult thing that all singers are dealing with. Kaz? I was just gonna say, doesn't it also remove tension? Well no, that's, what, and that's what I said. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. Removes pharyngeal constriction is just okay. fancy voice coach talk for okay. tension, constriction, pushing through the break and all that stuff, okay? All right, so um Kaz, um fire content please, and let's do the warm-up track and track. Okay. And let me cut you through that. I was there. Just give me two seconds. I'm almost there. Okay. I find it easier to work from my phone. Yeah, that's not uncommon. That's yeah. That's why that training page is there. The training page that has all the workouts yeah. on the separate page. The vision is that you would you know, I have a I have a vision that people would go into a practice space with their phones. And just pull up the training page and then just be able to work from their phones. So, yeah, it's good. So, I'm having a network with my phone. I just two seconds. I'll have to go on here. All right, that's fine. While you're troubleshooting that, um, true. Yeah. You, you fire up the warm up track to track, please. And and let's watch you um, balance sub bottle, uh, phonation threshold pressure with your. Yeah, track, track and track, right? Yes, underneath warm ups, compound routines. No, not that. Sorry. Okay, so you want to be logged in? Go to the go to the four pillars of singing. Yep. Or go to the training page, which is a little easier to find things because it's only the workouts, right? Um, anybody else ready to go? Jim, you ready to go? Yeah, I think so. Kaz, Kaz, did you get it? All right, Kaz, let's go. I'm going to do woman fast, yeah? Sure. Do, do, do what? Do you. Do you. <laughs> things i noticed you have a mic in your hand but it's not plugged in so you're not actually amplified is that is that, is that correct okay that's fine 
it might look a little silly, but I just want to, I just want to, in your defense, it's okay. Sometimes just training with something with the mic in your hand without the amplification, we, we prefer to have amp amplification, you probably don't for, for good reasons, but just having one in your hand still has a benefit of getting a feel for the tool in your hand. So that's perfectly fine. On your workout, um, I like that your intonation is good. Have you been practicing? Yeah. Well, not, not as much as I normally do, but I try my best half an hour a day. Well, that's great. That's actually a lot. I've been very, very busy, sorry, but I've been trying in between, especially in the car. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. So, um, nice. Now, on the track and track, there's three nasal semi-occluded phonations that we can alternate between. Okay. And I think you might know what they are. Can you tell me what they are? The three nasal, the three nasals, what are they? M, N, and N, G. That's right. Fire up the track again and alternate between all three. Mm, mm, and mm. Okay. Cool. And nipper like a puppy. Mm -hmm. They got to. And G. They got to. They got to. Good job. Intonation package. Intonation is there. Frequency. Uh, we heard you whimper like a puppy a little bit. We <laughs> we'll kind of get you so. So that is a symptom of the vocal folds being thinned out in that you're in crime. Great, gotta have that. Uh, you alternated between the three nasals. That's you're gonna get more out of the warm up if you do that. It's a little bit more complex way of doing it instead of only doing an M. So great. Fantastic. And you went up through your passaggio and, and then you came down an octave to do it again. Fantastic. Now, coming down an octave, that's perfect. I'll give you a name. So you went up, you came down an octave, you heard that, you heard that, which was good, good ears. Now, from the bottom, working from the bottom to the top again, I want you to track and release. Let's take let's take let's take the, the nasal and release the vowel. And what vowel, what singing vowel shall we release? Edging. E, 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 edging. It is, uh, is the sound color of a a a as in steak and eggs. And yes, good uh, job. A happens to be an edging vowel. What the hell does that mean? A is a good training bell. Everybody who's watching this, and in our in our program, we classify different training vowels into three different groups: edging vowels, neutral vowels, and curbing vowels. Curbing vowels. These red and vowels are sort of can roughly be translated to resonance. Okay, so these 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 resonances have sort of a default natural position. Now, you can manipulate the resonance in different positions, which is one of the benefits we get from the training. But out of the box, off the shelf, they sort of sit in a, in a default position. Edging vowels sit forward, and they resonate behind the back of the top teeth in the heart palate position. When, they're, when the trajectory is 
done properly by the trained singer. Hey, that resonance is is swirling around a hair. Okay. Hey, that resonance is horrible. It's in my throat, and it's going to make me tired, and I won't be able to sing well with that. Edging vowels, by the way, are preferred for training and most singing. So let me simplify this. Edging, pushing your resonance, your all of your vowels, all of your vowels, all of your sound colors, even if they aren't by default natural edging vowels. If they're a neutral vowel, ah, uh, or they're a curbing vowel. Oh, uh, uh, ooh, those are your curbing vowels. You can edge a curbing vowel. Ah, ah, ooh. Uh, those are curbing vowels manipulated to go forward to an edging position. I hope you guys are sort of getting this. Where am I going with it? Why is it important? What, what, what's it about? We want to train resonance forward, all of them. The edging vowels in an edging position, the neutral vowels in an edging position, and the curbing vowels in an edging position. Put them all forward. When you're training and when you're singing most of the time. Why? Because when you put your resonance forward, it builds the, the motor skills and the endurance for singing much better. Everything is better with training edging vowels. Uh, your bridging, your head voice, everything. If you're forward in your resonance, it's going to help you get stronger for singing better with everything. Okay? Where singing, allowing your resonance to fall back into a curbing position is a weak physical position. If you train your edging vowels in a back position or your back vowels in a back position, it's a weak position. You don't get you don't get resistance training from it. The outcome will be you'll be breaking through your your voice and in your head voice. You won't it'll be uh, it won't have stability. All right. So all resonance forward behind the back of the top teeth. Okay. I went off on a tangent a little bit there, but it's a nice reminder of resonance. And from a training perspective, just get it forward. That's the simple, that's the simple, simple lesson. Cass, do it again, please. Track and release into A, 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 A as in steak and eggs and put that behind the back of your top teeth. Let's go. You're doing great. Um, you muted. Be aggressive, you're working out. More aggressive on the vowel. Belt, let's go. Work it. Time, 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 right there. May. Don't back away. Go forward. So you, you see, you, you're lightening the mass. You hear that? You're lightening the mass. You're sort of backing away because it's getting a little bit tricky. Am I scared of it? I know. I know. I know. I know. I think. Yeah. You're, you're afraid of it, and we all are as we get through the passaggio. We go through that. You know, that's normal senior training stuff. We get afraid of the of the vocal break. And the formant shift, the, the positions of the voice or the resonance shifts or the formant shifting in the break, all of this, the TACT transition and the formant shifting of the, of the, of the resonance, 
it, it makes the voice break. And so it, you, know, you do that enough times, it creates fear for all of us. I'm in there too. The way to get out of that is don't, don't, don't give in to the fear. Go forward. Trust in your techniques and the things that you know. Cry harder. Get the resonance forward and, 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 and get after it. May. Think that's your note, please? May. Let's do it. Acapella. I want you to, I want, uh, we don't need the recording. So we're under the hood now. We're not going to use the recording. Just May. Mic closer to your mouth, please, and give me more energy. Fight it. Go. Me. That's better. And as you, yeah, and as you commit, as you commit to more, more muscularity and more aggression on physical aggression to get through it as you commit to it you'll feel a little bit of resistance like walking up the stairs or doing curls with barbells you'll feel a little bit of resistance inside that's a good thing you want that that means you're now working the musculature okay provided that the resonance is forward and you're in cry mode you'll be safe and you're in a healthy position so now all the all the physical risks have been removed Lead into it as long as you're crying. Okay, do it again, please. Attack it. Good, good. Your hey, okay, it's good. Your resonance is is sort of falling back a little bit. It's falling back just a smidge. Uh, can you feel that? Yeah, I can. Can the rest of you hear that? It's really, it's really a subtle thing, but you know, because we're we're doing this with you guys, us, we can probably hear. It. Did you, did you, can you hear how the resonance is not fully forward? It's a little bit sitting here in the back. It's in a weak position. Are you guys hearing that on that last chop? Maybe not. Well, cast it. Cast, do it again. Keep edge better. Edge better, please. Keep it bright and crispy. May. On the third note, and this happens, singers do this universally. I, I don't know why. It's a weird thing. I think it's tied to the neurolinguistics of the brain or something. There's some really interesting, fascinating little things that all voice students do, like little mistakes, little little, little things. That have that make no sense. There's no explanation for it, but they all do it. It's so weird. I'd love to get some studies on what 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 the why that is. And here's one of them. On the third note, don't know why. It's always the third note, typically. On the third note, that resonance falls back. Here's what we're hearing. I'm gonna say you. Hey, uh, sound guy, how am I coming? Is it, is it, am I okay, Jim? Um, I, I, it sounds a little woofy, but I can, uh, we can hear it. I agree, it is a little woofy. Uh, let me brighten that up. The, 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 um, um, turn down the woof, turn up the crispy shit. My arm doesn't bend that way. Okay. E, 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 are we ready? Kaz, here's what's happening. Can you guys hear that or is it distorting? Sound guy, are we good? No, I think it's okay. Cool. All right. No, in a male voice, I have to get into my falsetto, so it's not it's not a really great sounding example. But what I'm trying to do is show you that the resonance is sort of falling back on the third note. Yeah. It's getting in, it's going to a weak position. 
Only we could just be conscious of it. You see? You see how I sort of kept it forward? And I had to fight for that. It wasn't easy. It wasn't the coasty, let it slide position. I had, to, I had to fight to keep it forward. Okay? And you want that experience. That, that's what creates really strong head voice belts. All right? So do it again, Kaz, please. And on that third note, pay attention. Keep edging into the third note. Can I just add, I sometimes feel on that third note I'm drowning. I don't know why. It's like I... <gasps> I don't know why. You mean you're running out of air? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm just get more air. You get more. You, you need more. I agree. You need more air. I need okay. more air. You need some air. All right. So, so look. Breathing. Take a big, take, take a big giant breath and fill up below the rib cage in the core down here. Don't don't expand your chest. Don't lift your shoulders. Okay, that's sort of like basic fundamental inhalation for singing. Don't get, don't breathe high. Don't do this. It's not as efficient. It creates a tension creep. Okay, so good singing inhalations are low. Okay, like a, like a good yoga breath. All right, so. Me. Great job. Not you're doing a great job. Now slow it down. This is the issue of when we're chaining, sometimes we move, we're not conscious of it, but sometimes we do the scales too fast. And when you do it too fast, the body can't, the mind can't keep up with what you're asking it to do. It doesn't learn. It doesn't, you can't build the motor skill when you go too fast on the workouts sometimes, you guys. So in a situation like this, where we're trying to work out a part, a note, a, a, you know, a particular detail, slow down. Me. Me. You see, slow it down and get the kinesthetics going so you can feel it, be in it. Go. Slow down, Cass. No 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 no. no, 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 Now you're way down here. Now you're off pitch again. So we're uh, so it's our lesson right now is yeah, relevant yeah. to the frequencies that we're working on, which is where the hard part is, right? Me, me. I think it was. Was it? My battery. Thank, thanks, Jim. My the battery's on my on my keyboard crapped out. So yeah. Me, me. Me, Very good. Me, Slow down. Slow down and sit on that third note. Me. Sit on that third note and drill it. That's not the third note. One, two, three. Work it. Sit on that. Rub it in. Yes. Pay attention to what. Pay attention to what I'm asking you to do. Confused. I know. Pay attention to what I'm asking you to do. And you're doing a great job. I'm driving you hard because you're doing a great job. All right. All right. Good. The third note is the note that we want to improve. It's a little weak. Resonance is falling back in the curving position. So what I've, asked you, what I've asked you to do three times, listen to what I'm asking you to do. Stop on the third note. Sing three notes and stop. 
sustain the third note. Do this. Did you notice that I only sang three notes? Yeah, I did. Okay, did you notice it on the third note? I sustained it and just sort of hung out there and worked on it. Did you notice that? Yes. Please do that. Go to the third note and just sustain it and work on the third note because the third note's the one we're working on. Me. Yes, you're, Me. yes. That, that's the assignment. That's what I'm asking you to do. Now let's do it again. Let's get that third note correct. It's a little sharp. Me. Do it again, please. Me. There you go. That's what I want you to do. Lean into it. Figure it out. You get to that third note. And you're sitting in it for like eight seconds. You're sitting in that third note and you're looking around. And you're like, all right, here I am. I'm in that third note. What's going on in here? What's going on in the third note space? Oh, okay. My resonance is a little back. My, let's fix the resonance. Let's work on my embouchure. Go through your phonation package elements. Okay. Um, when you're in there, take that eight or 10 seconds that you're, that you're sustaining that and Tune it. Do it again. You're doing great. Do it again. Do it again. Make it strong. Me. That's the fourth note. Yes, that's the fourth note. Count three, not four. Three. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Yes. Yes. Stopping on the third note, and then when you're there, fix it, make it better, lean into it. One more time, third note, third note. Lean into it. Get, make it cut. Make it cut. Let's go. Me. That's the note. That's the configuration we need. That's an A plus right there. Now, do all five notes. <laughs> Do all five notes and make sure as you pass through the third note you just spent five minutes working on that the resonance and the, the physical execution stays at that level and it stays forward. Make sense? You're doing great. You're doing great. It's just you're doing great. Now put it all put it all together. Me It's a great scale. That's all very edgy. It's got a fantastic, it's got a, a, a super en plus, sure, madame. The intonation is good. That position, you can sing. And it's aggressive. It's not sort of like a wimpy, sort of like, you know, laying back and retreating in sort of a soft, you know, feminine, windy voice. It's forward, it's belty, it's aggressive, it's awesome. That's what we need to do. So, so that configuration I just coached you on is what I want to encourage you to be, take a mental picture that when you're training in the car, in the shower, in the car, wherever you can get time, that I want you to remember that, that template, that it's forward and it's bright. And you're going to be a little bit more assertive and aggressive on those notes and lean into them. And that you're going to seek out a little bit of resistance. You're going to seek out that, that, that resistance training 
the body will tell you it's, it'll push back on you a little bit because it'll, it's, it's basically saying, oh, we're going upstairs now. And, and look for that. Go find that when you're training and you get stronger. Make sense, Kaz? 100%. Thank you. You've answered a question for me over the months. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. What question did it answer? Well, every time I do sing, sometimes when I get to that third note, I do find I run out of air. And sometimes it does feel a bit windy. So you've now helped me to not be afraid of the note, but to grasp the note. Yeah. And to embrace it. Yeah, you can't win any victory by only retreating. Yeah, no, you can't. And, 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 and keep in mind, everybody, you guys and anybody watching this on the planet right now, keep in mind that this vocal training thing, this is physical training. Yeah. It's physical training. True. It's physical training, isn't it? True. It's, the, it's a gym for the voice. And I'm not trying to be cute. I'm not trying to just sort of come up with a cool metaphor. You know, this isn't like, you know, sing through your porpoise nose, you know, sort of sort of bullshit. This is like real stuff. It's training. It's physical training for, for little tiny vo muscles and ligaments and things that we can't see very well in here. But it's physical training. So, Amy, true, true. What is, what is one of the universal characteristics we all expect when we go into the gym to do physical training? What, what, what do we expect? Do we expect to sit on our ass? And lay back and, and coast, or what? What do we expect? True. Um, we we expect to get sweaty. Yeah, yeah. We expect to um, exert ourselves. We expect to move weight and have resistance. We expect to do some resistance. You know, the, the physical resistance, putting weight on barbells, creates a resistance to the musculature. And if you if you push against that resistance. It's above and beyond what you have when you first go in. Eventually, the body gets stronger and it catches up to the resistance. It's the point. We're doing that with voice coaching, with voice training techniques. It's the same thing. So back to Kaz's coaching point, Kaz, that's what I want you to do. Look for the thing that's hard. One of the things that I did and still do and still do to, I think, you know, develop myself as a professional singer that can do stuff is I was always very conscientious of not running away from the thing that felt hard. I, I seeked it out physically. So, you know, I'd spend all day on the passaggio because that's the hard part. I'd spend all day on F sharp, freaking F sharp, difficult note for a man. And, 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 and lean in, edge, do what Kaz was doing. You know, try to get that F sharp to get forward and get it get it to pop i don't you know I don't, I, don't, I don't train very much on the easy stuff you train on the hard stuff you go where it's re, where, where you get the resistance and your body will tell you where that is that's it, where to find it it's easy it's easy to find it it's where your voice is breaking it's where it's you know where the body is sort of the body wants to retreat don't let it Amy, you're a smart cookie. What 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 additional um advice can you give us in regards to what we're talking about right now, please? It's to be consistent in the training, do it every day versus one day a week. Yeah, that's good. yeah. That's good advice. Thank you. I'll follow up on that. The 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 the, the system, just like my biceps and my triceps and everything else when I'm at the gym. If you don't work it, it will atrophy. It will. It will. I'm kind of sad to say. These things that we're doing, you have to stay on top of it. And then you'll build the, the, your belt voice and all of that will just be great if you're on top of it. So, you know, we have we have jobs and family and it's hard to put in. You know, an hour and a half every day in a perfect quiet studio. I mean, not if we don't have, not everybody has that sort of that luxury, but you can do a lot in the car, sitting in traffic. You can do a lot just walking down the street. You can do, you can do a lot in the shower, seriously. Okay. Singer size and, 
what would you do? You would do onsets. You would you would work on, you know, those hot pockets. That's what I do. I just sit in my car. I just sit in my car in traffic and just you know, just just rub it in. Just rub in that F sharp. What happens? Well, you're getting stronger on the stuff that you need to work on the most. True. True. You want, to try, you want to try something, buddy? Yep. Try something? Okay, let's try something before we go. Cass, thanks for letting me pick on you today, but you did a really great job. I, Cass, for you, I want you to get more aggressive. I want you to, I, I want you to pick up your feet, put more weight on the barbell, and I want you to get more aggressive and 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 seek out that resistance. Okay, because right. I want you to be a belter. Okay, we can always ratchet back our weight, the, the mass of our singing. We can always kind of ratchet back and go soft. It's easier to sing soft and, and delicate, and we need to do that sometimes. It's easy to pull back on the mass and the belty stuff and get delicate. That's easy, far more easy than I'm training delicate and light all the time, and now I'm I have a demand on me to start belting, and I haven't been doing that. That's that's when it won't work, all right? <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, so do stairs, train train stairs with a backpack on, okay? Mm -hmm. So that when you run the stairs without the backpack, you feel light. That's all I'm saying. True. Mm -hmm. it's something. Show us something, buddy. I, I appreciate that you're here. Um, you're in Germany, is that right? No, I'm in Georgia. Oh. Re uh, Republic of Georgia, not the yeah. state of Georgia. Oh, yeah. God, that's exhausting. <laughs> Okay. Like a <laughs> I, I don't know why I thought you were in Germany, but uh, okay. My, my girlfriend's German. Oh, yeah. I knew there was some sort of uh, Deutschland connection there. <laughs> All right. Um, true. Yeah. We're short on time. You choose your poison. What do you want to do? Is it an onset? Is it the warm up? Do something for us. Let's give you a chance to sort of show us what you've been doing since I know you've been practicing a lot. Yeah. Um, can I do the can i do the track and release too you can yay um okay all right all right i have it right. should i do the the slow one yeah that's a good idea by the way we were talking about training slow there are slow versions of the workouts and the content so yeah that's a good idea let's do that okay
Right there, right there, right there, right there. There's yeah, your cat. That's right. There's your cat spot right there. All right. So done. No, sit up. You're not done. Great training. We do the scales until the scales box us off. This is what great training is. We do the scales. The scales are designed to make you fall. Do we get that? They're designed to buck you off. All right. And it did buck you off right to the passage, didn't it? Me. So you can do exactly what we do with cats. You stop the content, you go a cappella, and you slow down and you drill on that. True. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Fix that baby. In your mind, in your mind, okay, I'm true. I'm thinking, okay, I want that to stabilize. I want that vocal break thing to work. Okay, so what did I learn? In my mind, I'm going through my foundation package elements. I want to make sure, make sure that I'm edging my resonance forward. Make sure that I'm whipping and crying like a puppy. Okay. Make sure that I got a good embouchure. Make sure that I got a good posture. Make sure I'm having happy thoughts. Go through your foundation package elements and fix it, brother. <laughs> so, sorry. Um, Nothing to apologize for. Mm, uh, you need a cue. You, it's okay. You need a cue. Me. I think that's it. Jim, can you give us a cue on that? Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. That's going through the passaggio. I think it is. Yeah. True. Me. Okay. Jim, if you could help us, please uh, cue the next ch uh, chromatic note up. Up half step? Yes, please. And then it's it. Me. One more note. Keep going, true. You're doing great. Me. All right. All right. This is fun. That last note was grabbing you. Pharyngeal constriction it was pushing you. What are you going to do to fix that last note? What am I going to? I'm going to cry harder. Yes. Do it. Do it. Cry, cry harder. Track. Use H. Uh, uh, cry into that fifth note, please. Me. Uh, a little better in a way. Okay. You're, um, um, hang on. You're clobbering it. The entire scale is just, uh, uh, it, you're, you got, you're, 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 you're too angry. You're too determined. You, uh, determined is the right word. We want you to be determined. You're, 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 you're slapping the water. You're pushing too hard on, on your scale because you're, you want to get it. And you're trying to take my advice and get aggressive, which is good. But but remember, we have to balance the inertia, the mass and the energy of our training. We have to balance it with the physics of sound in the upper vocal tract. We have, we have to we have to adhere to the physics. That's why I say don't slap the water. Don't I mean you can hit water as hard as you want and you'll never go smooth through because it because of the physics of mass and water and inertia and all that jazz, right? Okay. Use that as a metaphor of how can I get my arm through the water in a smooth way as fast as I can before it begins to push back at me? There's a limit. I can go at a certain speed, and but then when I go to a, a certain speed, the physics begins to push back and I begin slapping my arm. Is this making sense? Yeah. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's like really hella esoteric, but it's a great metaphor for how we need to perceive our relationship, our negotiation that we have to have with the physics of, of sound pressure and formats in our voice. Okay, the physics of sound. Okay, there's a lot of physics going on. So we can't just clobber a tree. It won't work. We're not chopping wood. We have to, we have to, we have to, we have to sing within the rules of the physics. The physics is the boss. All right. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, true. Yes. Be aggressive. Be assertive. Get after it like you just did. Yes. But that has a limitation. You're slapping the water. Okay, so pull back just a little bit. Same thing, lots of cry mode, all the stuff, all the stuff, but 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 lighten your mass a little bit. <laughs> ah, shit, sorry. No. True, you're doing great. It's tricky, you're on a tricky spot. On that top note. By the way, you did lighten the mass a bit. You're now working with the physics, not against it. Good. There's something else has happened. That top note, I want you to modify your vowel touch. Okay, we're going to change the sound color just a little bit. You've got to, totally about the physics, you've got to turn that color a little bit. You've got to modify that vowel a little bit on top. And so the, the, the next question, next logical question, I, I know you understand that, I think. I think you understand that. So the question you have for me right now is what? And I'll give you the answer. Um, Got to modify the vowel. So you should be asking yourself, yeah, what what vowel? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, how can I get that? What vowel am I going to go to? All right, you're gonna you're gonna go to um, you're gonna you're gonna put a little bit of uh, 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 a little bit of a little bit of curviness in it. Ironically, okay. Just to so watch me. Listen, listen to me. May uh, Jim, Q, please. May May. Yeah, stack legs. Yeah. Do you hear the little, the little teeny pinch of uh 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 uh, uh in my eggs? Do you hear that? True, do you? It's subtle. Do you hear that? Yeah. Do the rest of you hear that? Do you hear that little that little that little touch of modification? What 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 word would uh fit that new syllable? Like if it's going from steak and eggs to um in English, in English phonetics, would could should. Oh, okay, okay. But in singing phonetics where sound colors are not finite, like they are in English, in language, they're finite colors. A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. That's, that's language. In singing, sound colors sit on a foggy spectrum. It's infinite. Okay. But, true, keeping it simple. That fifth note, touch in, just, just dust, just a little bit. Dust in, just a, just a pinch, a pinch of uh, 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 into your A. Now, and one more important point. I'm not saying go, it's not one for one. I'm not saying go to A to U. Uh. Because I just said that the sound colors and singing sit in a foggy spectrum. Okay, so, so you're going to blend them. They, they, they're, there's two, it's a, it's a cocktail, same time, okay? Me, You hear that? It rounded out, got a little bit rounder on that top note. And that's what helped me to get past the pushiness. With the cry bone and the other things, okay? Okay, go. You got it. You understand what I'm asking you to do. Now you just need to get to the right resonance. You modified to an A, ah, ah. not an U. Uh. You did this. Which actually 
could help you as well. But that's I want you to go to an uh, uh, an uh. We want a ishness and a pinch of uh, ishness together, please. Not a and a. Go. <laughs> Yes, yes, but don't drop your ump sure. Keep your ump sure. Keep going. You're almost there. No. Uh, not now. Lay back, lay back. Uh is curving, so lay back just a touch. Let it let the resins fall back just a touch. A and uh, not not a. Uh. Yes. Yes. That's the idea. You need to practice it. So in the shower, in the car, in Georgia. Don't do the easy stuff. Our big theme of the lesson today. Get to your passaggio. Orient yourself. It's a cappella. You're in the car. Orient yourself. Five notes. Find your passaggio. It's easy to find for everybody. Find your passaggio. Line yourself up on a five-note scale. And just run, just run the A vowel. And just work through that top note over and over again. And just practice in the shower, in the car. You know, tuning the resonance a little bit. And it'll come around. It'll come around. You just did it. You did it. It just it was squirrely and unstable because it's new. All right. If you if you focus on this geeky thing, if you just geek out on this for one week, just turning that vowel at the passaggio for one week or two weeks, we'll come back and if we spot check you, it'll be really smooth and probably really beautiful. And that's the way we build voices. So so guys, um, we're on overtime today. I appreciate your patience and all. Um, but uh, I guess one of the one of the messages today is um, I think there was a lot of lessons today, but but I think maybe the most important lesson today was how to train, how to get the most out of your training time. And and there's a whole bunch of scales in the four pillars of senior, right? A whole bunch of workouts and scales. And and they they come in different male female versions and they, there's a fast and a slow version that's helpful probably start with the slow ones if you if your voice is breaking up start with slow ones because one of the lessons we learned was slow it down okay but another lesson i think is maybe the most important lesson from today and that is when we're training our voice and we're doing scales students train scales most people just go on the scale and blow right past the hard part. They they felt it. They went through it. Oh, gosh, that was really, oh, my voice broke on that. All right, see you later. Bye. And they keep going. They just pass through the, the hard part that they know is there. It keeps tripping them up every single time. And they just pass through and keep going. And they and you can get better that way. But what I'm saying is if you really want to go pro, you really want to go pro, the best, the most amazing bass melting students singers i personally know people that are just absolutely freaking amazing okay one of the things they've done is they don't just wave goodbye to the hard part they stop hit pause on on your on your scales on your on on, on the tvs scale hit pause oh shit my voice broke hit pause stop it and then go back real slow and just work on the part work on the movement that's it. Just work on the work on the riff real slow. Just work on it. Cry mode, edging, keep your foundation package elements, and be keeping that in mind. That's your checklist. And just work on it. If you do that, if you stop and work on the hard part, if you seek the hard part, and this goes for songs too, for sure. Working out learning new songs. If you work on the hard parts that keep tripping you up, you get better. That's what the super duper mind-blowing pros do they do that when they go work on their repertoire and they work on their stuff before they go in the studio or they're going to sing at a big concert or whatever the really amazing people they're not just sort of blown past the hard parts and and 
three and a half ass. They stop and they work on that part. And they're, you know, you get the grammar, go, get the vowel right, get the resonance for it. Does this make sense, you guys? That's good advice. That's what the really super awesome, best, most amazing students I've had that are now like singing in front of big, super large crowds and they're just impressive as hell. They've all done that. They've, they've, they've geeked out on the hard parts and they made it a personal challenge and a game. They gamified it. I'm going to get this by the end of the week. Any questions? Team. Two weeks? Yeah. Uh, hang on. Thank you for asking. I'm going to Burbank. Hang on. Let me just double check. Uh... Yes. Two weeks from now. Yes. Uh, announcement. Fun stuff. Remember we were talking about that really kick butt mic from Mojave, that MAD with the, the, the smooth alternative. We were talking a little bit about that. Um, so I'm going to Burbank. We're going to do like a little Rob interview down in their studios um, in two weeks. I'm looking forward to it. And we'll get some cool content. I really love to. I do, do really love that mic. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Two weeks. Any questions? Guys, you look like you're burned out. You feel like you've been, you've been beat up, beaten up over there. <laughs> In Ireland, um, Amy, how you doing? Good. All right. Uh, was this helpful for you guys? Yep. <sighs> okay. I'm going to go ride my motorcycle. Uh, didn't hear, didn't hear you, Cass. Didn't hear you, Cass. You're muted here. You, I, I learned. I, I, yeah, I said you answered a lot of questions for me that I noticed when I'm singing myself. So thank you. Welcome. I'm all about tough love, you guys. It gets results. I'm not, you know, I can get kind of grumpy and aggressive at sometimes, but it's all it's sort of a bit of a facade. It's just a facade. I'm just trying to motivate you and get you guys to where you want to go. I'm not really. You know, a jerk or anything. I mean, most of the time I'm not. So, you know, I'm just trying to help you guys. Okay. Start video. Yeah. All right. Um, and hey, Jerry. Oh, you're, you're <laughs> late, you're late. Jerry. Hey, I had a power outage. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you're funny. So Jerry came in. Jerry actually, Jerry like came in like 45 minutes ago, but he finally figured out how to how to how to click on the on the video. Button. Video, yeah. Yeah. All right, Jerry. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for showing up. Um, we're just ending this. All right, um, I'll upload this to the playlist, and I'll see you guys in two weeks, okay? Yeah. All right, great job. I'll be on time next time. Yeah, be on time, Jerry. All right, bye. My name is Robert Lunty. I'm the founder of The Vocalist Studio. I will be your teacher and coach during this course. I've been teaching and coaching singers and voice teachers for almost 20 years. I'm the author of a best-selling book on vocal training techniques called The Four Pillars of Singing and the creator of the world's most comprehensive online training course for singers. Both have sold in over 90 countries around the world. The techniques I teach have also been sought after by voice teachers around the world who have participated in the TVS certified instructor program offered by our company. I developed this course with the objective to offer singers the best home study program in the world, which means that everything a singer will want or need to train their voice has to be available, and it is. The course is designed to help any singer at any level of experience learn how to train to build strength and coordination for singing. Techniques and concepts in this program are a compilation of the best practice, best current ideas available for training singers in the world today, all inside of one comprehensive program. If you practice, this course will yield profoundly noticeable results in about two to six weeks of training. For those students that train up to 90 days and really get after it, the potential for singing just about anything you desire with complete physical and creative freedom is extremely high. Some of the key techniques you will learn in this course is how to train 
with step-by-step -step workflows that makes training more efficient and relevant. How to warm up your voice, how to bridge your vocal break, bridge the registers, chest voice, head voice work, how to build the strength of your singing musculature, like belt musculature, in your head voice so you can sing chest voice high, how to use singing vowels to maximize your resonance and sound color, and the fun stuff, vocal effects, four vocal distortion techniques, vibrato, sobbing, and the yarl. And of course, you're gonna drastically expand your vocal range, which is something that all singers are needing to do and we all want and desire to do. Your voice will essentially grow stronger and more coordinated, just like any set of muscles, but you'll have to be patient. It takes time for the voice muscles to strengthen and to build the coordination you need to sing great. This is an athletic endeavor. That is why at TVS we like to say we train vocal athletes. If you stick with it, you will begin to sing better. In fact, most people that stick with it learn to sing a lot better. It's just a matter of application and commitment. Now, take a look at the course, take a look at the description, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. That being said, get started and I look forward to helping you out.